Welcome back to Rainbow Six Siege. Today we're going to be discussing Operation Demon Veil vale and where it stacks up compared to previous operations. Hopefully you guys enjoy. Operation Demon Veil vale released March 15th, 2022, which brought us a new operator in the form of a zombie and a new map, Emerald Plains. On top of this, we got the new mode, Team Deathmatch, the Ringoku event, Attacker Repick, and more balancing changes. Let's start with the new operator, a zombie. I honestly love operators like Azami. She completely changes the way you play most sites, and I love it when an operator can completely change a map or a site. Another example of this is Mira. She makes some sites that are normally completely trash for the fenders way more viable. Also, operators that have this much complexity leave people coming up with brand new strats with them years after they release. And I see that happening with Azami. I can see people coming up with brand new ways to play her on certain maps and certain sites for years down the line. I love it when an operator brings something like that to the table and it adds a lot more to their character because it allows people to spend a lot more time mastering their play style with that specific operator. Now for the new map, which new maps are always difficult to form an opinion on, especially since they are banned so much in ranked. Pretty much every season, the new map gets banned proportionally more than other maps. Now from what I've played of this map so far, I think it's a really fun map. However, I think in a competitive setting, it's roughly a B tier at most. To be fair, I've only had the opportunity to play it in unranked because it is banned in ranked so much. Like legitimately, if you go into ranked and Emerald Plains shows up, if the other two maps aren't completely terrible, Emerald Plains will get banned. So I'll have to see if my opinion changes after playing it in ranked. But as of right now, I think the map works better in a casual setting. The additional modes they added this season are some of the best we've seen in my opinion, especially this season's event, Ringoku, which is honestly in my top three events of all time. And the team deathmatch mode was a nice addition, which serves as a casual way to play the game or a way to get your aim warmed up before ranked. I'm really happy that Ubisoft has decided to add new modes into the game. It helps to add variety to the game and mix up the gameplay, which is important to me since the game can start to become stale later on in the seasons especially since I put over 4,000 hours into the game. So adding these events throughout the season helps to keep players engaged. This season also brought new balancing changes. The biggest of these being attacker repick, which allows attackers to change their operator during the prep phase to better fit the site at hand. So if your team was expecting the defenders to go a different site, it doesn't ruin your attack if it goes wrong. It also allows you to bring operators to specifically counter the defender setup which hopefully this change will help the game to become less defender sided. Obviously defenders will always have a slight advantage, but at least this could lessen that effect. Another big change that they decided to do is they added all 1x sights to most weapons, which allows for a lot of more variety in your gun loadout. I think this is a long awaited change and I'm glad it's finally here. It never made sense why some operators had sights that others didn't. And I'm, I, I'm glad that they're adding more consistency to attachments. Now, the last thing that I'm going to talk about before we rate this season is the Goyo rework, which I think Goyo's been in need of a rework since the utility meta. When this rework was announced, I was extremely skeptical, however. I thought removing the main draw to him, which is the fact that he had two deployable shields, would make him really underpowered and that the rework could actually hurt his run rate and pick rate. But now that it's fully released, I actually think it's done quite the opposite. I think he's a little overtuned, honestly, and I think he could use a nerf. However, I love this rework. It has made Goyo so much more fun, in my opinion, and he's arguably more viable now. So I'm very happy that they decided to change him. He was very annoying in the utility meta to go against, and now he's even more fun to play. Finally, I'm going to throw Demon Veil onto my tier list, which in my previous video, I talked in depth about what every season brought to the table, and I added them to the tier list. And honestly, I'm going to have to put Demon Veil in the A tier. I think everything is good about the season, except for arguably the map, which kind of puts it in a similar position to something like Red Crow. As I said in my previous video, Red Crow, in my opinion, brought some really strong operators to the table and some really good changes to the game. But the map Skyscraper was a very, very weak map in competitive. In my opinion, since Red Crow brought two operators with new guns and Demon Veil is only giving us one operator that doesn't even have new guns, I'm going to have to put Demon Veil vale below Red Crow in the lower A tier. Now, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you guys can go check out my operation tier list like I talked about earlier. And go ahead and tell me your guys' opinions on Demon Veil vale 
in the comments down below. I'm really interested to see what you guys have to say about it and whether you agree with me or not. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.